Hey guys, it's Will here. Welcome back to the channel and uh, welcome to another one in my Path of the Warrior series. Now, for those of you who haven't been following this somewhat infrequent series, basically this is me talking about trying to get better with my um, my Biltan Eldar, trying to play them more competitively because Eldar are obviously a very powerful army, but I'm trying to run a very specific build um, of the Biltan craft world rather than trying to uh, splice in lots of other different things and just generally improve how I play the game in on the whole. But tonight, what I'm talking about is chapter approved 2018. So uh, this came out a few days ago, and uh, obviously this is going to have a big effect on the game in total. Um, I mean, certainly in my local meta, we tend to play whatever the most recent chapter approved is, um, the Eternal War and Maelstrom missions from that. Obviously, if where you play, you play ITC mostly, then uh, that's not going to make too much of a difference because this obviously doesn't change the missions but the big change in here is points. Now I know some people were perhaps looking for more than just points to change you know for significant changes to unit profiles don't think that's what chapter approved is for FAQs can do that new codexes can do that chapter approved has only had some very slight modifications to a very select number of units either because they've got new models coming out very very soon or because they are intercessors and they're, you know, one of the absolute core units to GW's range. But anyway, stop ranting about that. So the big change to world art is points. And what everyone's going to want to know, uh, and what I wanted to know coming into this uh, when this was announced, was what changes is it going to make, first and foremost, to our most powerful units, the ones that Eldar players tend to rely on um, to really do the damage and carry us through, the things that make us strong. So Dark Reapers, um, I've seen these identified quite a few times as the best unit in the game. And I was a little, initially a little bit worried they were going to get another points hike and I saw they were on the list of points changes, but actually it's not a change, it's just codifying the already existing change from the FAQ earlier in the year. So Dark Reapers, not changed. Also, Ivrain, not changed. There are no changes to Yanari in this one, which is nice because they've been nerfed and nerfed and nerfed. Um, you know, they're still really strong, don't get me wrong, but they were, uh, you know, they've, they've changed the way Yanari work a few times already. So it's nice that they've uh, left them alone, give us some consistency. The two other key units to Eldar, Shining Spears and Wave Serpents, and, you know, two of the other amazing units that every Eldar player who's trying to play competitively will use. Uh, they both have had some points hits. So the Shining Spears are up three points. Um, it actually is six points on the base cost, but they took three points off the cost of um, the Underslung Twin Shuriken Catapult. So, uh, you know, um, plus three points so if you're running a maxed out squad of 10 that's going to put 30 points on the unit so it uh you know i don't think it's going to stop them being usable but it certainly means you're going to have to uh, invest a bit more and the same sort of thing with the wave serpent is up 13 points so from things like 107 base to 120 base which is you know fair i think it's such a good unit um you know, they've really been carrying my list back even before I ran the Shining Spears. The Wave Serpents were some of the key units. And you know what? I think it's fair, uh, especially when you look at the Wave Serpent compared to the sort of closest comparable thing in the Codex, the Falcon. Uh, previously, a Falcon with a decent loadout was running you more than a Wave Serpent for a little bit more firepower, but significantly less transport capacity and survivability and it didn't have the whole Serpent Shield shenanigans. Now the Falcon's gone down 15 points, the Serpent's gone up 13, and so, you know, it's more of a, a decision now. I think the Serpent is still generally the better unit because you've got that Transport 10, you've got that increased survivability, but there's now going to be scenarios where, you know what, I could get away with a Falcon over a Serpent in certain scenarios, which is nice for me because uh, I have both, so I can choose what I want to run. Um, certainly expect to see my Falcon making more common appearances in my list because it's got cheaper, um, its competitor the Serpent's got more expensive, and obviously this is what GW are trying to do. They're trying to make everything more balanced and encourage players to use things that aren't as commonly used. 
and stop people just spamming the same old units. Uh, the upshot of these major changes is that if you were running like a hyper competitive Eldar list that had two maxed out units of, wave, of Shining Spears and three Wave Serpents, you're looking at about 100 points extra on the cost of the army. Um, now this will be mitigated a little bit by um, the points drops elsewhere, but I think if you're running a really hyper competitive list you will have to make some cuts somewhere. Now if you're running a more balanced list it'll probably balance out because so many other units got points drops. Um, scatter lasers got a drop which obviously affects anything with them. Wind riders went down two points, Dire Avengers weapon went down a point, um, Vipers, War Walkers, Star Cannons, Eldar Missile Launchers all took some points drops. Um, obviously these were not units that people were taking as often. Um, I certainly wasn't using many of those apart from the jet bikes and the Avengers. Um, don't have a single scatter laser in my army. I am so glad I magnetized the scatter lasers and the shuriken cannons on my jet bikes because it means, you know what, if the points reduction to bikes and scatter lasers suddenly makes scatter lasers viable, I can use that. But to be honest, I'll probably still stick with the shuriken cannons because they gain more from Biltan and it's only about three points difference. Um, see, the bikes with the shuriken cannons went down anyway because the bike base costs went down. So uh, a bit more incentive to, to use them in my list as well. Um, and that and the cost reduction on the rain, uh, the Avengers and the Falcon probably about balances out the sort of lists I was running. But it does also, these changes open up other options. So the Wraith Lord went down significantly, both with the, the weapons, um, if you're running flamers on there, that went down, the model itself went down, the Eldar missile launcher and several of our other heavy weapons went down. I think actually it's all our heavy weapons apart from the Bright Lance and the Shuriken Cannon because they were pretty popular anyway. I've had a points reduction. So now Wraith Lords are looking a little more interesting. Um, and I certainly have some ideas of some fun conversions I'd like to try and I've now probably got the incentive to do them because they might be more useful in the game. Uh, the Wraith Knight as well. Um, the game, the thing that absolutely broke Eldar, or one of the two things that broke Eldar in 7th edition that then got nerfed to beep in 8th edition, um, has had about 100 points drop 100 points points drop once you add weapons depending exactly on your loadout so uh, yeah 100 points that's a huge amount even on a model that was running you at over 400 points anyway that's a big drop and i think it's going to bring them down to the point of being playable because they're not bad they're just massively overcosted. so uh, yeah i think people will be dusting off their uh, wraith wraith knights and getting them onto the table Phoenix Lords, most of them went down. I think um, Asherman stayed the same, Morgan Ra and Baharoth stayed the same, so three stayed the same, the other four went down. And the one that I'm particularly interested in, if you look over my shoulder here, is Karandras. So I have had this model for years, never got around to finishing him up, but with the points drop, he's 25 points down now, which is about, um, about a fifth of his points, about 20% points drop on him. Add to that, that um, striking scorpions have gone down three points per model. I've really decided, you know, now's the time to paint him up, get him out on the table and give him a go. Because th this is something I want to try. Because in the past, my scorpions never really did the trick for me. They were sort of OK, but they never really did, did the job and they were a bit pointsy. Um, the scorpions themselves have gone down three points. The Exarch's Scorpion's Claw has gone down three points and the Phoenix Lord has gone down 25 points. So uh, whereas previously a 10-man Scorpion squad plus Karandras was running you over 300, it's now under 250, which means the, uh, sort of the opportunity cost of trying them out is a little bit lower. And something I'd be really keen to do is have them work together with a Warlock to give the Scorpions plus one to hit. Um, and then the stratagem that gives you exploding sixes on your melee attacks. Stack that all up with Karandras's aura and the Exarch's innate ability and the plus one to hit against units in cover. So there's a few things you have to, to get it right. You know, it's uh, 
going to be tricky and it may not be optimal, but it's certainly going to be fun to give it a go. Um, it means that all your scorpions are getting exploding attacks on four plus because they, the stratagem gives them exploding sixes, um, plus one for a fight in a unit in cover, plus one for a warlock casting the plus one to hit power. Then you've got your, strat so your stratagems giving you exploding sixes and Karandras is giving you exploding sixes and they've FAQ'd it so that um, the way it would stack you'd be hitting a four plus would be considered a six and it would net you two extra attacks um, and the exarch it would net you three extra attacks and that guy's packing a power claw that doesn't have negatives to hit and Karandras has a similar ability on himself and obviously he wouldn't benefit from the stratagem and the warlock's power because they have to be targeted on the unit but uh, yeah you could seriously get some uh, some attacks and some damage starting up. Um, previously been thinking about running it on foot but um, thinking about it that probably won't hit the target very well because uh, then to pop up from reserves and then get off the nine inch charge which as we've seen countless times a straight nine inch charge is hard to pull off it's not so bad if you're you know an evil sun orc boy who's getting an extra inch on that and here we go but for striking scorpions unless you want to burn another two command points for um core to the young king it's going to be tough to pull it off but run them up in a wave serpent um which you know is expensive but i've got an idea of repurposing one because if you've seen my video about Wave Serpent's Dark Reapers combo, that still totally stands. But you want to get a bit more out of the Wave Serpent now, so once the Dark Reapers and the Dire Avengers have disembarked, jump these guys in the back, that's turn one, then it moves up as well as part of turn one. Then turn two, they can get out and get into the fight. So the Serpent has served its job for two units and given these guys a really good chance to get into combat and really start doing some damage. Like I say, this is all... Uh, theory i've had a chance to read it haven't gamed with the eldar in the new edition and uh, the new uh, general's handbook yet uh sorry chapter approved not general's handbook that's my uh, inner age of sigma player coming through there um but yeah certainly going to be one to watch so i think going forward the strong units are still going to be strong but they're going to have a little bit less support so you're really going to want to get the most out of them you know you're going to have smaller armies if you're running these strong units so by all means I think they'll be usable but you're just going to have to be a little more careful to get the most out of them and other units that might not have been usable before might start to creep up I mean certain things I don't think they went far enough on I still don't see vipers as that useful um, in any build other than Biltan with twin shuriken cannon because uh, uh, well maybe Alatok as well because Alatok's just good for everything um, because although they've now got a points drop and a lot of the other weapons got points drop you're still paying for a vehicle that's main thing is it's mobile with a heavy weapon that wants to stand still so you know I don't think that's going to work and um, warp spiders um, as much as I like them I think they without the ability to innately jump back without using stratagems that they had in sixth and seventh edition I still think 12 inch range on a unit that really isn't very good in combat um, is going to be a bit risky. I mean, fire dragons can pull it off because they just put out so much damage to such a hard target that the 12 inch range, you know, so what? If they die, they did the job. Warp spiders don't do quite that much and are a bit more susceptible to the counter punch. So I'm not sure they're going to be that much more usable, which is a shame because I've got like 10 of them um, and they kind of fit the fluff of my list, but you know, can't have everything you want. But I think on the whole, you're going to see a bit more variety. Oh, and the hemlock stayed exactly as it is. I know that's another popular choice in the tournament lists. And uh, yeah, hemlock has stayed as is. So, you know, if I uh, wanted to, I could certainly consider adding one of them to my list. But uh, so many things I want to paint at the moment. It's a case of I can't add everything trying to uh, make use of what I've got. But anyway, this has gone a bit longer than I thought it would. Let me know what you think in the comments. And thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.